So if you're looking for uh, guidance on uh, implementing MLOps practices with Amazon SageMaker, sorry, you're in the right place. Um, let's take a look. So who we already introduced me. Uh, let's take a look at what we'll cover in this session. So on today's agenda, first we'll talk briefly about what is Amazon SageMaker. Then we'll talk about the MLOps ready capabilities that are built into Amazon SageMaker. And we'll follow with a live demo. And as we have only a short 15 minute session, let's get started. So AWS AI ML offering services are stacked into three layers. The top layer are AI powered services that developer can access with an API call. For example, you send an audio file and you get back the transcription of this audio. No need to know ML. Then at the bottom layer, the ML frameworks and infrastructure, uh, it's a do it yourself approach where we provide you with the compute instances that are right for doing machine learning, we provide you with machine images and containers with deep learning frameworks and the needed drivers, and you take it from there. And then at the, the middle layer, the middle layer uh, is where Amazon SageMaker fits in. And let's zoom in on that. So Amazon SageMaker is an end-to-end -end machine learning platform that helps both developers and data scientists to prepare, build, train, and tune, deploy, and monitor machine learning models. SageMaker is modular, so you can just pick and choose the parts that you like. You can just, for example, just use it for training or just use it for deployment. And you can mix and match with any third-party tools. Everything is, while there's a pretty comprehensive UI, everything is also available through APIs with SDK for different languages. And as you can see from the list, there's a lot of breadth of functionality, but at the same time, it's also very deep. For example, if we take a deployment as an example, you can, once you have a model registered in SageMaker, you can deploy it in four different ways, as a real-time REST endpoint, as an asynchronous endpoint, as a batch job, or as a serverless endpoint. Okay, Amazon SageMaker is uh, DevOps ready and provide with robust IT ops features across security, compliance, and others. So this, you know, this part is covered when you pick SageMaker. And it launched four years ago, and it has tens of thousands of customers in Israel and worldwide. Okay, now let's focus on uh, MLOps. So we understand that MLOps is a discipline that sits in the intersection between machine learning and data engineering and DevOps, which makes it interesting. And those MLOps practices span across people, technology, and processes. For today, we're focusing on the technology part and specifically how to do that on a SageMaker environment. Here's a quick look at some of the services you could use to build automated workflows and CI and CD pipelines for machine learning. At the top box, you can see SageMaker, native services, pipeline, model registry, projects, we'll, we'll do a deep dive on today. And at the bottom part, you can see do-it-yourself tools. So these are traditional CI CD tools. Some of them are not machine learning specific, some AWS, some third parties like Airflow and Kubeflow and Jenkins. Let's see the technical challenges for doing machine learning lifecycle, the related MLOps practices, and then the SageMaker MLOps ready capability to address those challenges. So the first, the first challenge is that you need to build and control a repeatable and consistent process for producing a model, both when developing by the data scientist, you know, one stage after doing that in the notebook, and also have the same thing running in production. So that includes steps like preparing the data, detecting bias, running explainability report, training, tuning, evaluating, and then if the model meets a minimum criteria for performance, you wanna register it, uh, and handed off to the operations team. So SageMaker Pipeline is a serverless orchestration service that ties all of these steps together. A data scientist by themselves can create this pipeline 
for example, as you can see on the screen, uh, to a Python SDK that defines a DAG, which executes these steps. And once executed, all of the steps runs in the cloud. The key thing to note here is that this pipeline that can be used during development and experimentation, that same exact pipeline can also run uh, on the operational phase when you want to do retraining and automatic retraining. Uh, um, so there's no need to record the whole thing. It's the same thing. Uh, other key features for pipelines include triggering pipelines when the data changes or the code changes, step caching between executions so it runs faster, support for placing conditions, calling Lambda functions beyond those SageMaker steps, uh, logging each of the steps and its artifacts for input and output, and I'll show that, and integration to experiments for comparing trial, plus support for more enterprise-grade features like multi-account deployment. Then another challenge, the second one, is how do you bridge the gap between the data science building the model and the ops person deploying the model? The solution here is a model registry. It's a catalog for all candidate models that we want to deploy. It keeps tracks of the different model and their versions. The associated metadata that comes with this model, like the training metrics and any custom data you want to place there. And it manages the approval process of any model candidate, where approval really means uh, the model going through the different stages, going to staging, going to testing, going to production, and the human interaction that goes into that. Then a final step, a final challenge is how do you manage it all in one place for end-to-end -end traceability? SageMaker project is a layer that comes on top of the pipeline the experiments, the model registry, the deployment endpoints you have, and any CI CD pipelines that you have, plus the Git repositories that keeps the code for all of this. It helps you uh, manage that all together. And also to get started quickly, you can use a project template, um, which has, uh, there are built-in templates that helps you spin up uh, quickly all of these components so you can just you know, take the existing uh, template, edit it, adjust it to your project so you can get started in a day. So to sum it up all together, you can see here that you, on the left you have uh, any triggers for running a pipeline or any changes to source control. Then you have a pipeline running. You can see it as the data processing and training, evaluating. Uh, and the same thing that runs in the development phase could run on the operational phase. Then once you have a good enough model, you would deposit it into the model registry, the data scientist. And from there, uh, through an approval workflow that involves different personas, like an ops person and the, the, and the um, data scientist, it would be deployed uh, into the different uh, uh, deployment targets. And all of that is managed on SageMaker uh, projects. Just a second. Okay, so let's jump into a demo. Okay, so now I'm in my uh, AWS console and I'm going to clicking the SageMaker service. And then I'm going to SageMaker Studio, which is a UI that helps me navigate through the capabilities. And I'm opening Studio. And I'm, when I, once I'm here, this is Studio. And then I want to go and create a new project from a template, as we discussed. So I'm clicking this triangle here. And I have the different capabilities. I'm clicking projects. And I'm going to create a new project. And then I, I'm choosing to create this project from a template. So I need a template that does building, training, and deployment. I pick that. And I'm starting up creating the new project template. I'm giving it a name. Let's call it project five. And I'm clicking create project. And a new project is created. Now it's going to take two minutes. Uh, but we won't wait for that. I'm going to go and see an existing project. 
This is an existing project I created uh, two days ago. So you can see I have here the, I have a repositories that contains the model building code and the model deployment code. I could edit those to affect those processes. Uh, I have here uh, the pipelines for doing the model building, which I'll show. I have here the different models and the associated endpoints, in this case, staging and post. Uh, production. So if I want to go and, for example, uh, change something in my deployment, I cloned this repository into here, and I have all of the uh, relevant files. For example, this this uh, controls how a, how a production uh, deployment would look like. So I could go and change that, and for example, turn off data capture. I'm not interested in capturing the input and output that goes into this real-time model. Once I save that, I have a kind of a Git uh, uh, interface where I can uh, work with that or through command line. So this one had changed and I could uh, commit that uh, uh, if I'd like to. Um, and that of course would update my entire workflow. Um, so this is editing the code. Uh, uh, I could also go and see my executions. So in my pipelines. So this is the pipeline I have defined. Uh, if I click the pipeline first, there's I can see the executions of the pipeline. For executions, I could start a new one. Let's start a new one. And I can you know, override any parameters to this pipeline. How does the pipeline actually looks like? Let's see. This is my new execution. The pipeline has a processing step, then a training step, then evaluation. Then I'm checking the mean squared error. And if it's above a certain threshold, then I'm uh, registering it to the model registry. These are just default parameters I have, which I can override with each execution. And if I'm looking at the execution, this is a successful execution. So everything here is green. Once I click this, I can see the input and outputs uh, and the logs. And for example, the output for uh, the pre-processing of the data is three, three different, uh, three data sets. One for training, validation, and test. I can see the location. And the output of this uh, stage is of course the input of the next stage plus some more automatic inputs. Yeah, so this is a successful uh, execution. I can see here an existing execution. So blue means in progress and I'll be able to go through that. I can stop executions if I want to. And uh, once the pipeline is completed, it creates a new model in the model registry. Let's see that. So, uh, so this is my model and it has three versions. The first version, version one is in production. Version two is really in staging and waiting to be uh, to go to production. And version three is a new version that is pending. If I click this version, I can go and see the metrics. You know, I just have mean square error, but you could have, of course, a lot of metrics here. Uh, inspect that and see if I want to go through with that. If so, I can click here, update status, and say that uh, I'm rejecting it, or perhaps I'm approving that. So I'm saying approved for production, updating the status. And this will trigger uh, a deployment to my uh, staging environment. Um, OK, as we're kind of almost out of time, I'll stop the, uh, the demo and get back to the presentation. So wrapping up, you need to remember that you can spin up a whole uh, pipeline, uh, including all steps through projects and its templates in less than half an hour, and, don't, and then go and iterate and uh, adjust that to your workload. Uh, uh, you have pipelines for doing the whole steps, model registry as a handoff, and then through an approval process using a CICD, um, deployment pipelines, get the model into production, manage it, 
fall back if needed uh, and do all of this. So if you want to learn a bit more, you can go to the SageMaker MLOps page. We have more resources to get started. And if you're interested in a, more of the demo that I showed, there's a one hour version of this session uh, in this address, which you could go and visit. So thank you very much for listening and have a great uh, conference.